Good morning, folks. Top right, watch the picturesque fountain of plasma arcs above the decayed sunspot rotating over the lamp. Today we've got a lot of news to cover, so let's get started with our star at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun relatively quiet. Interestingly, those bright spots on the left straddling the solar equator are remnants from the previous solar cycle, very low latitude to contrast the fountain above the new cycle spot on the north departing. Solar wind was in a weak coronal hole stream for much of the last day and is coming back down in intensity now. As I said, it was already a weak stream. We never lost the stability in the magnetic field. Quick look here at the sun diving comet from the Kreutz family that came in this week. They arrived from the south of Earth's January position in orbit, so a few months past that we watch it come in and atomize from the bottom left due to solar wind interaction. Folks, there are multiple deaths reported and numerous tornadoes that struck the south out of the storm system as I'll turn off the clouds at night. The tornado alerts are still active as of this morning as the storm charges for the coastline. By the way, the maker of this atrocity is the low-pressure purple cell. It is spinning, fed by the surrounding highs and driving a major temperature shift behind it that has already begun breaking cold and snow records. We're going to start the science news with an aesthetic peek at NGC 2273 from Hubble here. The galaxy is rare because it's got blended spirals and rings. Try tracing the lines as individual units from core to perimeter and you'll see. Link is below. Now we're going to go out to space news here and bring it home at the end. It turns out the toothbrush relic is as annoying to astronomers as toothbrushes are to two-year-olds. Time to toss out the current explanations for what it looks like and come up with a better one. Mainly, we need to ditch the concept that a stranded molecular cloud got hit with a shockwave and stripped material from it. One around these parts might suggest the sort of plasma magnetic interactions that would occur if there happened to be, oh, a common gas receiver on the other side of the flow of the bristles. Hint. It's not going to be dark matter. And with all of the hype recently on how dwarf satellite galaxies in the Milky Way don't appear to need dark matter, one guy from Harvard and another from Princeton decided to get together and prove that the ultra-light version of that dark physics obscenity isn't there either. Giggity. Up next, it's a shame this actually took a paper to solidify, but yes, the reason lightning is more intense over the ocean, albeit less numerous in individual strikes, is because the conductive saline seawater allows better paths of conduction between the cloud layers and the ground for more efficient charge redistribution within the global electric circuit. So almost exactly 10 years ago, the Intersat Galaxy 15 suffered a major electrostatic discharge. It was recovered a bit, but it was a huge issue. Strong solar activity at the time had been suspected by many scientists, but was also firmly denied by all involved with the satellite. Well, it turns out the scientists' instincts were correct, and it was due to the major interaction of space energy with the upper atmosphere. I went and pulled the images of the solar event, which predated the Solar Dynamics Observatory back in 2010, but even with the lower resolution SOHO images, you can tell it was a solid eruption. Decade late is better than never. Two electroquake articles up next. The first is a confirmation of the radio frequency signals before earthquakes. In these cases, those are due to the interaction of the fault with Earth's magnetic field, while the total electron content and critical frequency precursors are geoelectric features. And speaking of geoelectric, how about the neckline connection between deeper blood echoes and the low depth surface quakes? Turns out the conductive structure beneath the ground helps determine seismic activity. Imagine that. You can learn about blot echoes and seismic precursors at QuakeWatch.net, and yes, the penetrating electric fields and extreme space energy interactions with the atmosphere have considerable effects throughout the column and with the ground. Weather, seismicity, also that technology as we saw in the show, and yes, your health as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.